Good afternoon, everyone. How are, how is everyone doing today? I'm trying to juggle between a couple different things right now. Can y'all hear me loud and clear? <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. How are, how is everyone doing today? Let me mute this. Jason, my name ain't Jason. <laughs> Johnny Nice Eggplant. <laughs> I give it another minute. Let some more people get on in here. Johnny, you want me to show you the money? I'll show you the money. It's my swing trade that I took yesterday. In ticker Z, Zillow, short. It's a bearish swing trade. Hold on a second. Over. Boom. There you go, my man. Is anyone else getting an echo? All right, let's get this going and start looking at some of these swing trades. All right, so as most of y'all know, this is the TT black box system, the long form of it, transparent traders black box. Obviously it's easier to say TT black box, which you can find it at transparenttradersblackbox.com or if you just wanna make it easier, ttblackbox.com. So looking at today's swing trade alerts, 
Today is April 24th, 2020. And let's see what we have going on here. Let's look at the futures first. <clears throat> All righty. Man, choppiness. So at this moment, Futures are not looking strong at all. So I'm going to look to the downside here. So far, you know, we have these alerts that came across at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. And you can actually see most of them are bearish, which at this moment you can see the market is bearish. Here we are. This is one of my favorite tickers to trade. This is ticker GRUB, Grubhub. Let's take a look at that. Christian Wallace. Yes, sir. Give me a minute. brain in English. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Like this a little easier. We'll filter for the grub up swing trades. So what I like to do is when I see a swing trade alert come through, I like to see when it last alerted. Well, grub up obviously alerted today. That's why we're looking at it. But before that it alerted on April the 1st, and then obviously March 31st, the day before that. So we can just take a quick peek back, see how that turned out. So the 31st, get some of these dang on lines off this chart, make it a little clear for everyone. All right, so here we are in the 31st. We can see that old alert. And that one, that one turned out pretty well. Even, even that following day, I mean, it, it got down a little bit from its close. Then we had that alert reiterate on the first, which is right here. We see that strong push down. So that, that was solid right there. Now, here we are today, April 24th, and this is where we are on the daily chart. So if you look through here, you can see this consolidation. We have a resistance right in here around 44.80. And let's zoom into the five minute. So we can see that run up, got rejected, came down and is consolidating. Now, the thing with taking a swing trade today. Today is Friday. There's a lot of time between now and the bell on Monday. You never know what you'll get after hours or on a weekend. The craziest stuff can happen that won't even make sense and totally screw your trade up. With that being said, just talking about this setup currently and what I'll be looking for, honestly, next week, since there's really no point in me jumping in right now. <clears throat> so I like to look back, see when it last alerted. It just alerted today. It's been a while since it previously alerted. Now, had it been alerting a lot more up until this point, if it was alerting bearish swing trade all the way up until now, you know, more consistent, like on the daily time frame, I wouldn't take it. I'd have to wait for that category change. So what I mean is if we had a bunch of days where it was alerting a bullish swing trade, and then today it rolls over to a bearish swing trade, then I would take it serious. So once these alert, you have this little column over here for scaling ready. 
This is only to help you to scale into your trades. If it goes red, it's not saying to jump out of your trade. You know, that's really going to be on you. So how I trade with this feature and with the swing trade algorithms here is when I'm ready to enter, I'll take one contract in that direction. So here, I'm not going to do it today since it's Friday. I'm just going to wait until Monday, see what happens over the weekend. But on Monday, if there's no change or if this goes up, I'll start scaling in. I'll take one put contract. If that contract is going against me, meaning the trade is going against me, I'll wait two days. On that second day, if I am in the red, I'll add another one on. If it's kind of going sideways and I'm near breaking even, but not much movement, I'll hold off until the next day. The goal here is to wait to scale into your position. And the reason being, you don't want to get too heavy too quick. You want to give yourself time in these trades for them to work out. These algorithms for the swing trades, they can take up to two weeks for it to work out. So right here for Grubhub, ticker GRUB, just alerts today. This is day one. Had this been a Monday that this alerted, I'd be tacking on one put contract here. If it dropped down pretty decently, the fallen trading day, I'd probably just go ahead and lock in profits and not really try to chase it too much. I'd probably target, if it dropped down the next day, I'd probably target around 20 to 30%. I could go for more, but it's just, honestly, it's easier to, to go after the easy money if it works in your favor. Now, scaling in. When I go to scale into this one, Again, like I just said a moment ago, I'll take one contract for my entry. And then every time I scale in after that, it will be the same contract that I'm taking. And I will only be adding one contract at a time. This will create my average to be more in my favor. And when this thing drops, it's gonna shoot me into profits very quickly. At that point, just depending on the setup, it's kind of hard to say, but to give a default answer, I'll probably just target 50% profit. Until then, you know, that's pretty much all I can say for what I'll target, target profit-wise for. I just have to see the setup happen. Now, let's just say come Monday, it gaps down. If Grubhub gaps down on Monday, I'm not going to worry about it because it's already started making its move and I don't want to chase it. So that's what I'm looking for here in Grubhub. Now, at this moment, if I was going to take it with any swing trade, you need to buy time. Buying time is like buying insurance. It's nice to have it, even if you don't need it. So I'll be looking at these May 22nd contracts, these expirations. And depending on how this thing opens up on Monday, and again, I hope this really doesn't gap down. It can run up for all I care, or at least just trade sideways, but I don't wanna see it gap down. At this PPS value right now, I would just take the one right at the money. So currently in this moment, I would take that 43, no, that 43.50 contract. Now, if it gaps down on Monday, I'm not worried about it. If it gaps up, hey, that's even better for me. I'll let that thing go in a bullish run. And whatever the first row out of the money is, I'll take on the contract there. And then I'll wait for two days if it's going against me and then start scaling in more. 
So that's what I'll be looking at come Monday and how to play that swing trade. We have a couple more in here. Um, there's a couple, a couple of them I'll probably take, but overall, for what it's alerted today, so far at least, GRUB is my favorite. Now, let's go over Beyond Meat. So I can see that Beyond Meat, ticker BYND, alerted yesterday. And we'll just filter this to make it easier. So perfect. There's one alert here for yesterday. And it's still saying scaling ready. Let's pull that up on the chart, see what we got. Oh, beautiful setup. So we can see yesterday, this alerted at 13.30 p.m. Central Time, which would have been right here in this candlestick. The price it alerted at was, at the opening of this candle, was at 97.7. So this thing is up 11 points right now. And this thing is looking good for a short, even now. We can see that weakness. Now, had I already been in this one, say at 97.70 or whatever price range it might've been with it running up that much, even though it's Friday, since I'm already in it and it's technically only one day against me, I'd probably just tack one on. I'm not sure how expensive these premiums are. Okay, so they're a little costly, but Back up one. All right. <clears throat> okay. So depending on the size of your account and where you bought at for the strike price, you're going to have to be a little bit more st strategic. Like me personally, I know I'd tack one on since it went up 10 points against me. And then I just let it do what it's going to do on the weekend. And if it gapped up more, I just I just wait another day or two and then tack on another one because I'd have enough time on those contracts. So we can see that Beyond Meat here, it is struggling, especially above that um, BWAP line right there at the moment. But nonetheless, it's struggling. And that run may be dying. So that one right there is, I'm actually gonna jot this one down. I'll have eyes on this one as well. But beyond me, that's what I'll be looking at. Um, let's see, Christian, I just saw your comment. You got in, let's see, at 99. I assume that's your strike price. What's your expiration date? Okay, never mind. That's not a strike price. Your strike is 95. What's your expiration date, Christian? Okay, so it's gonna be roughly seven to $800 to add on another contract right now. Um, that's going to just depend really on your account size. Um, like I said, I know me, I would throw it on, but you still have time. Okay. May 15th. All right, cool. You still have time for this to work out. So really, I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with waiting it out through the weekend and just seeing what it does Monday. Maybe it would go in your favor on Monday and just really just purge itself. 
But again, it's just one of those things we'll just have to see what happens. Let's see, let me look at some of these comments real quick. So for the question, would you consider looking at a at a five minute alert? <laughs> Check to see until it rolls over to bearish before entering. Are you talking about like comparing that to the swing trade? If you're trying to compare the five minute movers to the swing trades to look for an entry, it's probably not even gonna work out for you. They're two different time frames. And even if they would match up, truthfully, they are irrelevant to each other, 100% irrelevant to each other. Let's see, for options, is there an IV that you like to range in for swing trades or how do you consider IV crush for swing trades? I'm not really worried about an IV crush. Um, one of my rules when I'm looking for swing trades is to know when their earnings are. So beyond me, their earnings are on May 5th. Let me check out Grub real quick. <clears throat> and Grubhub's earnings are on May 7th. So I still have a little bit of time there. Not much though. And let's see, pretty much I would try to look for these trades to work out next week. I would not want to hold these through earnings. It's never good to swing trade through earnings because you never know what's going to happen with earnings. It's, it's really just a gamble. And if you want to talk about IV crush on the back, if you're in right now going into earnings on the back side of them earnings, that's when you get hit with the IV crush. see yes i can look at exr for you <clears throat> give me some information on that trade for exr okay so exr i see a bullish swing trade alert for april 22nd let's pull it up on the chart <clears throat> Okay. For EXR, what price range did you get in at? Whether it's shares or contracts. Chainsaw? Yes, sir. So let's just say with EXR taking the worst possible entry with the current setup. All right, thank you, Daniel. Appreciate that info. What strike price, by the way? <clears throat> um, so right here on the 22nd, taking at the worst price or the worst time at its high at 91.67, pretty much at the end of the day. This so next day, completely just purge itself. Probably just flowed with the market. But let's see. Here we are, it's coming down to support. So we can see that bounce off of that support right there on the daily chart. Get earnings on May 7th. How much 
How many times have you scaled in? If I was trading this and I took this bullish swing trade on the 22nd, I'd have took one contract, probably end of day on the 22nd or just whenever it alerted. <laughs> if it went against me here, where we're at right now, I would actually hold off on entering. I let today go by and I'd see what it looks like on Monday. Whew. 12 times. It's too heavy for swing trades, man. That's jumping out the strategy of splitting your overall position size up 10 times, unless if you had the intent to take 120 contracts overall. <clears throat> Like I was saying, with what I would have done, I just took one contract and how it's setting up today. And also how the market's looking, the market's looking weak right now. Since this is a bullish play, I just hold out on this one and wait till Monday to see what happens and then consider maybe taking another contract there. <clears throat> Daniel, percentage wise of your account, how much how much do you have um left over to basically bail you out of this trade if you had to scale in more in the future? If you don't mind me asking. <clears throat> Yeah, well, this is what concerns me though, with the market kind of being weak right now. EXR, looking at it on the five minute, it's struggling to get above that VWAP line. It's probably gonna keep pulling back. But if I was in this one on, or got in this one on the 22nd, I'd definitely wait until Monday to see what the market does before scaling in anymore. See, Brian, for options, would you consider a $7 call on Tilray? Honestly, I don't consider anything outside of my algorithms. I only trade what my algorithms alert. Let's see, Webrat, is it too late to add another contract to CPRT? Let me take a look at that. Man, that's nice. Webrat, are you in profit on this one? <clears throat> and I hope you are. That'd be hard not to be in profit on this one from this alert. Personally, I wouldn't have, or I wouldn't add on any more. But also, too, at the same time, scale in ready, man. Red light. Oh, hey, you made a great decision selling today. Don't chase it. So here we are. 
like I was talking about earlier, how I use these. And I am the inventor for these algorithms. So it would probably behoove you to follow my recommendation on how to use these. <laughs> so we can see the 13th and 14th bearish swing trade. And then it rolls over on the 20th to a bullish. That's exactly what I look for in these alerts, whether it's a swing trade or the five minute movers. So on the 20th at 1300, which would have been, I got in this on the 21st, but even right here, getting in at the worst possible time. Let's see. <clears throat> that candlestick opened up at 68.92. And here we are four days or four trading days later at, well, a near $73. So this thing literally at the worst entry, it's still been in profit. That's that's a that's a solid trade right there. That's what I'm saying. This is this is how these algorithms you know work. Will it be 100? percent No, but I can tell you my experience and looking back on a lot of them, it's around 90 percent or greater. <clears throat> that's why you don't jump into a trade 100 percent. You scale in, for instance, taking contracts, one contract at a time, pick a reasonable strike price and pick. Honestly, I recommend four weeks out overall. It gives you enough time for even if this setup takes the entire two weeks to actually happen. Hopefully it goes in your favor sooner, but you'll still have time to make this work out if you pick four weeks left on those expiration dates. Man, I wish I would have held on to that one. But I, I sold mine yesterday, literally at the opening. <clears throat> Dang, Devin, that's, that's awesome. Any more questions? Oh, web rat, my pleasure, man. Outstanding, outstanding trade, by the way. If people just follow the strategy that I lay out in this tutorial videos on the homepage, Telling you, you just need to know enough about trading, like in the context of, you know, how to click on a buy, how to click on a sell, basically how to put it in your orders, kind of understand your order, how to pick a few weeks out for their strike prices and stuff like that. I mean, if you understand like that basic, basic level knowledge, if you're disciplined enough to slowly scale in, more, more likely than not, you'll be fine. Web rat, no, my man, it's all you. I might've invented the algorithms, but you were the one who was disciplined enough to do what you had to do follow the strategy and it worked.
shit. Looking at the five minute movers for BYND. That's solid. At 840, the first alert, bullish five minute mover. That candle opened up at 108, had that nice run up to 113. <clears throat> Start pulling back. And at 1010, it rolled over to a bearish five minute mover. See at 1020 reiterated. Okay. Auto up to 1125. So it was solid on those bearish five minute movers. 1235 bullish five minute mover. Let's see, 1235. There, still reiterating. So the setup right here in this moment, it's looking pretty solid overall. But again, I just watch out, see how it performs under that VWAP, if it gets rejected or not. Hopefully this will go into a second green wave on that MACD. But so far, that the five minute movers for Beyond Meat, that flow has been spot on. See, Joseph, I can pretty much, let me see. If it's not on my algorithms, I don't even bother looking at them. Okay, so cake, that's Cheesecake Factory. It's never alerted. Let me check this in the trades. Okay, it's never alerted on my algorithms. There's a reason why I created these algorithms. I, I know what they do. I know what they look for. And that's why I don't waste my time on anything else because I don't have to. So, chainsaw, let's see, range for the theta. So if you're buying contracts that are four weeks out, theta is not gonna hurt you. Unless if you're buying extremely out, out of the money. The time that theta starts hurting you, is when it's getting very close to expiration. So once you get into like that last week, whew, theta gets insane. <clears throat> Finny, see James, black box. So you're not, you're not executing any trades on here. So you can use whatever broker you want because it's, they're not attached in any way. Your broker is where you'll execute your trades. The TT black box, it's just giving you information. This is a, you know, you know, an algorithmic flow. And if you follow that flow, you just, you execute those trades on your own platform, whatever it may be. Alrighty, guys, I'm going to get off here. I appreciate y'all tuning in. We have some good trades to start looking at on Monday to see how they turn out. And other than that, y'all stay safe. Johnny and I are going to go live tonight. Devin, real quick, that CPRT, that run has already been going. It's way too late, way too late to jump in. So I will catch y'all later. Y'all trade safe. 
keep those position sizes small. That is the key to really trading. Keep those position sizes small and scale in over a period of time. With that being said, y'all take care. Johnny and I will see y'all tonight in the Transparent Traders Facebook group. If you're not in there, try to join. If you're banned, well, tough luck. <laughs> so I'll catch y'all later. Y'all take care and y'all have a good night.